All right, welcome back. So in the previous videos, we've learned how to you know, download the designer, sync the application to our phone, and create the basic layout for the remote for the room that I'm sitting in. So the next step is probably gonna be the one that I'm least helpful with, which is actually creating some commands to communicate with the devices that you have. And that's because everybody's devices are gonna be different. My TV is a Vizio M70 model. Um, it's not super common, um, and then I'm controlling it with a global cache IR repeater on my network. Now, I've already got the IR repeater set up, and the TV is actually controlled from my media rack using the blaster that's included, which means that it doesn't actually have a sticky IR sender on it because of how far away it is from the TV, and because I forgot to run the correct wire in the wall when I built this house. So... Um, mine is actually sticking off the edge and pointed at the TV, um, but for testing purposes, I would recommend using one of the sticky pad uh, direct sensors that comes with the global cache uh, just to remove any uh, chance of error with this. And also, make sure you're doing your testing for device implementation in the room with the device. Make sure that your network is set up very robustly. Make sure you've got the remote for the actual device handy. Uh, I have all those things, so I'm ready to start. In the application, we're going to create a new device, and this is going to be a global cache device because that's actually what I'm going to use to control it with. So here's global cache in the list, and it's going to prompt me for the host name. The host name of my global cache device is 10.0.0.25. Yours is obviously going to be different for that. I also make sure that want to make sure that you have it set up on a static IP. It's going to ask if we want to go ahead and uh, add that to our project. We're going to click yes. And I'm going to immediately change the name of this to Vizio TV. Okay, and you can change, you can see it change it over here in the sources. Now, if I want to navigate to my global cache, I can do so in a web browser going to here. You know you're on the right page if you end up here. And then over on infrared, in my case, I want to make sure that connector 3, which is where my TV is connected to, is set to IR Blaster, not IR Out, which is the default. Uh, and also, it can only be in Connector 3. Only Connector 3 is capable of blasting, and only if you have a blaster set up. Blasting meaning sending the signal across the room versus a regular IR control where there's a device taped directly onto the IR intake port of that device, which is a much more common setup. Just as a uh, shout out to everybody that does have a setup like this, Anytime this global cache loses power, has a network change, or somebody physically unplugs and plugs back in connector three, it's gonna reset the setting back to IR out. So make sure, number one troubleshooting step over here is always to make sure that connector three IR blaster is set. You can save that right there. Now, in order to get the command that I wanna send, I have a really simple one I start with. A lot of people start with on off, which is, uh, can cause some problems for me because uh, on Vizio TVs, there's not always database codes for discrete commands. Discrete meaning send on only or send off only, not toggle, which is what's actually on the remote. This is a toggle button. You point it at it. If it's off, it turns on. If it's off, on, it turns off, etc., cetera, um, which can cause a lot of problems later on. Uh, so I'm going to start actually by turning my TV on first, and I'm going to attempt to send just this Netflix button. I like to use this one on this particular TV because it can be activated from any screen, anytime, uh, from any menu or anything. It practically overrides everything. So I'm going to be using Netflix as the command I want to send. And now in order to find the command, I'm going to go out to the global cache control tower. Uh, if you're looking for this, uh, this web address it's located here within the project if you go to the help uh, and then scroll down here it will tell you uh, so to create our first command we want netflix uh, we can go here to the database we're going to type vizio do not hit tab here you do actually have to click on the word vizio in order for this next window to populate we're going to choose tv a model in this case we're going to do all models and uh, you can see down here, there is an option for Netflix somewhere in this menu right there. 
Unfortunately, it won't show you the code. You do actually have to register for the site, email it to your, and uh, when you log in, it will email it to you. It takes about five minutes to get it, and you can send, send the entire code set at a time, which is what I usually do in this case. Uh, you're going to end up with an email with a bunch of information that looks like this. I've already singled out the Netflix button, which is the one I want. And the code that we are going to use in this application immediately follows it. It starts with send IR, it's got some commas, etc. But the end of the code is going to be where the next uh, quote symbol is. So I'm going to press here and keep scrolling across these numbers until I end up with the end quote. I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard and click here. There's a bunch of different ways you can get that done. And then I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard. So now I've got the code for this particular TV's Netflix button. So we're going to go back into the remote at this point and we're going to create a variable within this source. And the name of this variable is going to be Netflix. The connector type, obviously, IR. The connector address is a little tricky. I'm going to go over that in just a second. This particular one is 13 with a colon in between. And the code we want to send from our clipboard is right there. We're going to click OK on that. And now we've got our first code. To explain this 1 colon 3 that's in there, I actually have to click on the help here, uh, which is a different help than is available in the source. You actually do have to create a variable first before you can see this help document. And the important thing is right here. This is 1 colon 1 closest to the power adapter. This is 1 colon 2 and finally 1 colon 3. 1 referring to the module number here. Uh, the, the power and the ethernet are module 0. You can see for other devices made by Global Cash, it gets increasingly complicated. Uh, I just have one of these small ones and uh, all of my commands for my TV are going to go in through 1.3. Uh, my receiver is either 1.1 1, 1 or 1.2. I'll figure it out in a later video uh, when it comes time for that. So this is saying, in short, IR command, send it out the last port located on that global cache, which I know I've already changed here to be a blaster, so it's going to send that signal, and it is going to send the code that I've got right there. Make sure you do not have the quote at the beginning or the quote at the end. We want just the code in there. So with our variable created, I'm going to go back to the views and I'm going to click on the Netflix button. Now I need to assign that code that we just created, that device code, to this specific button. And I can do that here located in states. Uh, for Make sure you have the Netflix button selected. So the variable state that I want here, there's a handy drop down button and obviously it's going to be the only one in there right now, is going to be Netflix. Now, if you don't see a problem yet, uh, you may not have as much experience as I do, but this state variable, Netflix might not have been the best name for it because it did not inherit the name Vizio TV. So once we start getting a lot of commands in here for all these different devices, Netflix might become a problem. So I'm gonna actually change the variable name here and I'm just gonna add that parent one so it's gonna be Vizio TV and then a, da, a space dash space Netflix. So it's saved like this and it will automatically pick up that change over here. Okay, so when I click this button, I want to change, uh, launch this state variable, Netflix, Vizio TV. So I'm gonna save that. Now I could go ahead and transfer this over to my phone at this point to test. I don't need to do that though. The, great thing about home remote is you can test it directly from inside the application. Going back to the home screen, we're going to click on start here and we're going to notice that this window here is going to change a bit. Uh, it's going to get rid of our grid lines. Now this is exactly as it would show up on our phone. You can see I'm scrolling over the buttons now. They're a little more uh, active. So by clicking on Netflix here, we should see the TV behind me activate that same code just like if I had pressed it on the TV. So this is kind of what you're gonna be doing for each one of these commands. Now there's a lot of commands and you may not actually need to do every single one that's on the remote. Uh, a lot of times I'll go ahead and go through the work and effort of creating them within home remote just in case I someday need them, even if I don't plan on actually putting them somewhere here on the remote itself, or I might create a 
separate tab somewhere where I've got all the very, you know, not used very much commands like aspect ratio change or sound mode or picture in picture or, you know, headphones or something like that. Uh, just so it's available so that you can throw this in a drawer permanently. Um, but in the meantime, uh, it's good to have this out to test with. Um, so the Netflix button we've proved obviously works. Uh, now it's just a matter of going through each one of these and uh, attaching the uh, TV remote commands to each of these uh, behind the scenes and making sure that they work. Another thing you could do is you can create a test button somewhere and just reassign whichever codes you create to that test button. It's a little more cumbersome. Uh, I do that sometimes when I'm creating more complicated uh, scripts or variables and things like that where we'll cover later on. Uh, so for me, buttons that are gonna be controlled uh, just like we did is gonna be the Netflix, Amazon button, uh, the second and third row here, this middle control panel, and as well, the on and off button. Uh, I'm gonna get all of those from this Control Tower Global Cache website. Um, and also notice under models, I had all models. Now, almost all the buttons I need are in, mod in all models, but code group two, in my case, also had some helpful buttons that weren't included in all models. Sometimes you can even find buttons in there that aren't on your remote that actually do work with your TV. Uh, also later on when we get to the QWERTY keyboard portion, we're gonna need those bottom code uh, that bottom code group as well, so I went ahead and sent that to myself too. So at this point, you should be good for creating global cache device codes, sending them, uh, whether through a blaster or an IR sensor, um, and then linking those buttons uh, or those device commands to the actual button using the state variable listed there. So that's all for now. We'll see you in the next one.